Hi there, my name's John. I manage a flock of about 300 breeding ewes. I've been a sheep producer for about 10 years now. I've always had a fairly healthy flock, but over the last few lambing seasons, many of my ewes have been going into labor early and their lambs are born dead. While it's never easy to deal with and always a point of concern, it's not uncommon to have a few ewes abort their lambs every year. Problem is, the past few seasons, it's been well over 10% of my ewes. In fact, two lambing seasons ago, almost half of my first time lambers aborted. I called my vet out to take a closer look and discuss these issues. Turns out what I was experiencing is called an abortion storm. My vet explained that there were a few things that I could do to get things under control and prevent this from happening again. Apparently, most abortions in sheep are caused by bacteria or parasites. I've learned that abortion storms happen because many of these abortion-causing bugs can be easily spread from one ewe to another through things like contaminated food and water or by licking infected material like a dead lamb or its afterbirth. It's like a chain reaction, and it all has to do with the spread of nasty bugs from one ewe to the next. Another problem with abortions is that even though ewes look healthy, some might actually be infected. It's like you're working in the dark and you don't know you have an issue until it's too late. When I think back to when I first started to have problems, I remember some replacement ewe lambs I bought at a sale a few years ago. They looked healthy and I was excited to get them home. I didn't bother asking about the farm they were from or what diseases they might have. I'd never had issues in the past. Once home, it wasn't long before my new replacements were pregnant. I was thrilled and they looked great. After lambing time, I moved them into the barn with the rest of my pregnant ewes. There's nothing quite like a barn full of happy, healthy ewes. It wasn't until some of them started to have dead lambs a few weeks before their due dates that I realized something was going on. By the time I discovered what had happened, the rest of the flock had already crowded around and were licking the lamb and afterbirth. My vet explained that this is one of the ways that the infection can spread to the rest of the flock. It may also have gotten into my hands, clothes, and boots from handling the sick ewe and the dead lamb and then spread to the rest of the ewes. Knowing that, it's not surprising to me now that a number of the other ewes in my lambing barn also had abortion issues. It all started from those replacement ewes. After talking to my vet, one thing I wish I had done was submit lambs in their afterbirths for testing. I learned it's really important to know exactly what's causing the abortions because there are specific things that can be done depending on what the bug is. Apparently some bugs spread through dead lambs and their afterbirths while other abortion causing bugs can be spread through the feces of infected ewes or even cat feces in the barn. So submitting lambs in their afterbirths for testing is crucial to make a plan of action. My vet gave me some tips on what I could do during the next lambing season if I started to see another abortion storm. So during my next lambing season, I was more prepared. As soon as I saw a ewe abort, I separated her from the rest of the flock so she wouldn't infect the others. This was easier since I created a new pen just for monitoring and treating sick ewes. I even got separate equipment and coveralls to help protect my healthy ewes from getting any bugs. After separating the infected ewe, I removed the dead lamb and as much afterbirth as I could and kept it cool until I could submit it for testing. I also dug up the bedding where the dead lamb and afterbirth were, disinfected the area, and put down fresh, clean bedding. One of the most important things my vet told me was that most of the bugs that cause abortions in sheep can also be spread to people. Since I found out about this, I've been wearing gloves whenever I handle dead lambs or afterbirth, and I wash my hands as often as I can. My wife, who was pregnant during the last lambing season, didn't handle the lambing use to prevent any bugs from affecting our unborn child. I'm taking this issue a lot more seriously after learning about this, that's for sure. Once the test results from the lamb I submitted came back, my vet and I reviewed the results together. Turns out the abortion storm in my flock was caused by something called Chlamydophila abortus, 
which is a bacteria that's easily spread through the body fluids of the infected you. Apparently, this is also called enzootic abortion in use, or EAE. After discussing my EAE problem with my vet, we decided to develop a vaccination plan for my flock. She explained that following a vaccination plan would help manage the issue, especially if I made sure to use good management practices to prevent further problems. These days, I'm more careful about where my replacement lambs come from, and I've started lambing my replacement ewes in a separate area away from my other ewes. It's just better practice in my book. I've also started lambing my first timer separately from the rest of the flock. This is what I did on my farm, and things are working out much better for me this season. My abortion rate is only about 1% now, which I'm told is pretty normal. For you, I'd say talk to your vet and work out ways to deal with abortions on your farm. You'll see prevention and control is all about reducing the spread of abortion-causing bugs through good management and a solid action plan. And once you have your plan, it's pretty straightforward. 